Hello YouTube, uh, nice to have you guys here. Today I'm going to comment on this video that is called Don't study English, do this instead. I pre-watched this and uh, my reaction was not very good actually. <laughs> so um, I want to say that everything I tell in this video is going to be disagreement with this person. This is not a personal attack. This is not something that I want to criticize this person. Um, it's just I will tell why I think that this opinion that don't study English and do her suggestions instead, why I think this is not actually true and it's not going to work. So um, let's begin. So a big red flag for you when you are watching videos on TikTok or YouTube or whatever, whenever you see something with don't or stop uh, that's not a red flag by itself, but it can be if there is a, you know, don't, and then there is something crazy. Like uh, on TikTok, there was this guy saying, don't pronounce T. Nobody pronounced the, 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 the letter sound T, you know. Uh, you know, like uh, instead of saying uh, dignity, people would say dignity. And then some people call her, uh, call him out, say, you know, like, how should we say tattoo? Should we say au? Yeah, how to say tattoo without T, yeah? The biggest mistake people make when learning English and probably one of the most common misconceptions is that people think that they need to study English. And I say, don't study English, live English. And now let me explain what I mean. What does studying mean? And how do people usually approach this process? And how do people perceive studying? Studying means getting... The problem here is that not... It's not that she's like, oh, um, you should also do something else. She says, don't study. Just st stop studying. That's her suggestion. She's like, you know, if you're studying English, you're wrong. Okay? Don't forget. Are you studying English? So stop it right now. Stop. So stop studying, all right? Getting knowledge about something by reading, examining it in detail, or researching. We usually perceive studying to be hard and boring and something that you can usually complete and leave behind, like a course or when you study in school, you can't wait to finish it and forget about it. When people think that they need to study English, they usually think that they need to take a course or work with a teacher one-on-one -on -one for some time and... Yeah, uh, maybe because they're normal people. <laughs> uh, it's not about like English only for anything. If you want to study like a skill, the first things you're thinking about are like courses and I don't know, teachers. It's normal. You cannot deny it. You cannot say it's wrong or to think this way is wrong. How, how can you say that? It's just ridiculous. And that'll be enough. When they finish it, they will know English and they won't need to go back to learning again. Boy, are they wrong. Well, to be fair, to each his own. If your goal is just to pass a test like IELTS, then yeah, you pass a test and you forget about it. That's why it's important to determine your goal. Do you need English to... Yes, but like if you pass the test... Doesn't that mean that you have the skill? Like, I'm sorry, but like, um, yeah, I know some countries, they don't give you like, if we're, st if we're talking about school uh, education, right? Like primary school, high school, like, uh, okay, this girl, what is she talking about? Is she talking about private um, studies? Is she talking about primary school, university? They're so different, you know? And she puts everything in one group. It's like, oh, you study, pass the exam, and then you forget. That's not how things work. There are different types of exam, different types of, different levels of uh, exams and things, you know? Like, you can't just take everything and say, everybody passes the test and... Uh, and then they forget. That's not how things work. A lot of people do need to just pass the IELTS exam. So they study for that, they get their band, and they just relax and stop because that was their goal. You can reach a certain level. That's not... <laughs> if you pass the IELTS exam, you're already good, you know? Like, I, I, of course, it depends on, like, uh, what is your score, yeah? But usually like pass the exam, it, let's say six, all right, IELTS, six. 
if you pass six it means you're already okay you will not get lost in an airport let's say um and you will never forget it it's not true that you forget uh after you finish the exam especially ielts now she's specific yeah she says ielts that's not true um i had students who practiced toefl with me and then they say that like years later they remember the stuff that we have learned together you know that's just not true you can't forget it's not like you th maybe just because you forgot one thing it doesn't mean you forgot like everything you know uh, this girl is generalizing putting everything into some like into everything puts into one group that's not how you should talk you know like uh in english and maybe even a very good level but then what if you just quit practicing and using English, your skills will worsen. Of course, you can take breaks from learning. If you go a month without saying a word in English and not listening to anything in English, you'll be fine. But if this period expands to a year, you most likely are going to have to work on some skills once again, especially speaking and you might forget some vocabulary. That's why I prefer living English. What do I mean by living English? You need to surround yourself by the English language so that you have no choice but to use it. You need to incorporate it into your life so much so that it doesn't feel like learning anymore, but is just a part of your everyday life, part of your routine. This way you will not forget English, you will not lose your skills. On the contrary, you will be only improving every day little bit. There's just so many things. I don't know from where to start. Okay, so um, let's not talk about English only, all right? Any foreign language. Um, I have studied Russian as a foreign language. And I didn't speak, I didn't use Russian for like five years. And recently I've met a Russian guy who could not speak English at all in an airport. And when I, when I talk to him, everything's perfect. Not a single problem with this guy. So, can I use my example to say that this statement is wrong? No, I can't. Because one person's example can never be uh, posted on YouTube and used as an example for you. You know, like, oh, see, this guy is like this. You should look at him and study from him, learn from him. That's not true. You know, you say one person does this and I say me again one person haven't got this so who's right in this case right you say yes I say no who's right yeah another thing that she says that oh, you're only improving if you surround yourself with English oh are you sure um, like uh, surround yourself with what half of the English speakers in the world are non-natives which means that every, okay, this will sound silly, but every second sentence that you have heard in English in your life was told or written by a non-native English speaker, mathematically talking, because the half of the English-speaking population are non-native, you know? So, if you're surrounded by non-natives, you will make more mistakes. It will actually make it worse, you know? It will improve just backwards <laughs> another thing oh, and another thing surround yourself with English as a fantastic tip that I almost never give to students publicly or if I have like 20 group um, sorry if I have a group of 20 students I will never tell them um, surround yourself with English and live English and stuff like this why because that is very, very uncomfortable. Okay, try to take your phone or a computer and change it to a completely foreign language that you know a little bit. Your life will be miserable. And yeah, you can say that, oh, but that's a good way to improve. Yes, it's a good way to improve, but it's hard. You cannot uh, give this advice to group of people like publicly if you see a guy who's super passionate and 
this guy's like, oh, you know, I play this game. This game is in English. I watch this movie in English. And I I will be like, oh, this guy likes this type of practice. Not even practice. He He's very passionate about this. I will give this guy a tip, you know. Oh, change your phone to English. The language, yeah? Computer. And try to th- surround yourself. I will give this tip to this one particular guy. But publicly, I will never give suggestions that are hard. They make your life quality worse. At like, I, okay, I understand there are benefits, you know. There are benefits of you running outside like 10 kilometers. But if you're a beginner or you're like a new guy or that's studying, can you do that? You can't do that. You can force it, but you it's not a good suggestion. And, uh, again, and also, f- uh, speaking of levels, right? What are the levels that we're talking here? Like, what are the suggestions? Is this for low-level guys, like beginners? Or is this for advanced learners? If if you don't specify, I mean, this girl doesn't specify uh, the level in which we're talking right now. Yeah, so another red flag for you when you're watching videos on YouTube or TikTok or whatever, right? You should check if the suggestions are generalized or if they're specific you know you open a video and it says like oh cambridge b1 and you're like oh wow fantastic this is my level for example yeah just giving examples can be anything else like uh, oh my grade is TOEFL 7 or i'm an intermediate guy just like approximately understanding your level right But if you see a video that just says everybody, just generalize, like, oh, guys, just, you know, go talk English to your grandmother. It's going to be great. Uh, It's a huge red flag, huge red flag. By little, you probably won't even notice your progress because it's going to be a constant thing. But mark my words, one of these days, you'll be told that your English is great and you'll be amazed by your English. And you'll think to yourself, but wait, how did this happen? That wasn't hard at all. And that's the beauty of living the language. You improve while... It's very hard. (laughs) It is very hard, okay? Stop telling people. I hate, I'm sorry, but I hate when people are taking something really hard, like studying English, for example. Oh, English is such an easy language. Or the tip I give you, the suggestions I give you are so easy. That's not easy. It's maybe easy for you, or maybe you think it was easy for you. Um, But just, that's not how things work. And, okay, generally, okay, generally speaking, never tell anybody that a language, a foreign language, is easy. If it's English or whatever. English is a hard language. It's, It's not the hardest, but it's not easy in any ways. It doesn't matter how you practice, you can... Um, you know, there is a practice that guys do, they sleep and they listen English, and uh, some people told them that if you listen when you're sleeping, the words go inside your brain, and you are like, uh, and then you wake up, you don't know where you learned this word from, you know, it's like, <laughs> it doesn't matter, oh, sorry, sorry, off topic, yeah, but um, you should never tell a foreign language is hard, it's not true, Okay, stop saying that. You can say that, oh, this grammar part is easy. You can say, oh, this thing about this language is easy. But like generally speaking that all this is easy. Uh, It's just a lie. I'm sorry, but that's just a lie. Not even realizing it. Although it might not be easy at the beginning because it takes a bit of an effort and discipline, but it'll be so worth it because you can't just stop effort and discipline of what (laughs) effort you take okay all right efforts okay let's understand efforts efforts you change things that you use in english your tv your computer and your mobile phone efforts all right just it took you five minutes efforts efforts let's call it efforts discipline (laughs) how does the discipline work here discipline of what studying right so she's still talking about studying she imagines this as a as a study the the way she imagines this is a study and uh, what is the discipline how does uh this is the type of person i tell you uh i i i used to have students they say 
uh, you know, I practice so much. I practice uh, every day. I practice like four or three hours. My English just doesn't improve. And I'm like, what is the practice that you are um, doing? Well, how do you practice? Like, oh, I watch Friends and I watch The Big Bang Theory. I watch some TV shows. Like, that's not practice. Before I open YouTube and I search English, I was amazed how these people are coming to these ideas, crazy ideas of that watching Friends is a uh practice you know but now i'm w i'm watching more of these videos and i'm i'm terrified you know i want to make things clear for you guys uh i'm i'm, I'm just i have no words <laughs> learning and using a language and expect it to stay the same level have you heard the saying if you don't use it you lose it skills need to be maintained when people go to college they can't wait to finish their studying Again, English is not a skill. Some parts of the English are skills, like speaking is a skill. But she talks about forgetting. If you know apple is apple, that's not a skill. That's not... Yeah, if you don't speak for some time, later you, you may be, not for sure, may be you will speak a little bit worse. This is not proven in any ways. It works for some people, doesn't work for some people, you know. But like she says like, oh, you use a skill. Um, is she talking about speaking? Is she talking about remembering words like vocabulary? Is she speaking about grammar? Who knows? Just an English, you know. Eng Do you, have you guys, your English is good. Yeah, like that's not the things, that's not how things work. English is a complex thing. Some parts may improve if you're watching a TV show, but some parts may just, you know, stagnate. Some other parts of English may just never improve, like grammar. That's not true that English improves. That's not... You should forget about this. You, sh you, can you should specify, for example... Uh, my listening improves, or my speaking improves, or my grammar improves. That's how you should think and talk, especially if you introduce yourself as a teacher. You can't say, your English will be great. That's just, I don't know, even, either it's a lie, or it's an exaggeration, or just a manipulation, or maybe just incompetence. I'm not sure. And they do. But when they do, they usually proceed to applying everything they learned at their jobs. This helps them maintain and enhance their skills. You need to maintain a language so as not to lose it. It's just like with any other skill, be it playing an instrument or driving a car. After a big break, you need to work on your... I'm sorry, I have to pause so many times. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so, it's not the same as other skills. You can't compare, alright, let's say like music and languages, right? If you don't play your instrument for, for one year, okay, a test for you, a question for you, okay? Let, let me see how you think. If you don't play guitar for a year, Will you lose your skill? Five, four, three, two, one. Answer. If you want, you can answer in the comments. I don't know. But uh, this is a type of a question that requires another question, which is how long have you studied and practiced before? If you have practiced six months only, the chances of you forgetting after a year is very high. But if you practice it for 10 years, for example, not using the language for a year will have like maybe like zero effects. Yeah. So this person saying that, oh, you don't use it, you forget. That's not how things work. Let's say like a guitar player. This is her examples. I'm using her examples, okay? 
a guitar player like uh, I don't know who's popular I'm I'm sorry I'm terrible I just know one guy who plays guitar is Jimi Hendrix I don't know if he's alive or not I'm sorry but uh I'll talk about him with present tense assuming he's alive okay Jimi Hendrix playing guitar for maybe like I don't know 60 years if you apply what she says, it means Jimi Hendrix doesn't play for one year, two years, even for five years. When she, when, when, oh, sorry, he's a man, right? Jimi Hendrix, Jimi, yeah, he's a man. If, <laughs> I'm so sorry, it was honest, it was an honest mistake. So, uh, if Jimi Hendrix takes the guitar, even after five years, he will be a master, he will be a monster. You can't say, oh, you don't use the skill, you lose it. That's not how things... It depends on how much practice, how much expertise you had before, okay? And um, another example was about the uh, car driving. That's just ridiculous. I don't... Should I explain? Should I really explain? That's... Uh, all right, maybe I should... Exp all right, let me explain. <laughs> maybe, maybe some people honestly think that learning a car driving and English is the same... I mean, she she uses them in the same category. So she believes that, right? I don't know if this really needs, but I, okay, let me explain. Car driving has standard rules that are in front of you every day. If let's assume you go to work or to school, almost every day you will see the red light, you will see the green light, and uh, as a yellow or orange, I'll say yellow, okay? And a yellow, okay? So, god damn, my, 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 my car knowledge is terrible. I'm so sorry. And, <laughs> and this is something you will see every day. You will encounter every day. And the rules are specifically made to be as easy as possible. I know that a lot of people will say, that. no, that's not true. But the car rules are kind of made by humans to make it easy and as much easy as possible and understandable and then they give you practice by looking at the skills and then you're good right but you don't have english grammar rules for example every day in a street you don't walk and then you stop and you're like hmm uh, run ran run and then mm, okay just uh, reviewing the i don't know the irregular irregular past tense yeah and then you're walking to the shop and then the uh, you want to cross the road and then there is like i don't know uh the english vowels are a e e o oh, it's like oh yeah thank you thank you that's oh jesus i'm and my explanations are also terrible i'm sure a lot of people on comments right now will explain better why car driving and Studying language are not the same. Like, how can you say that? Oh my god. Skills once again. You don't forget them completely, but they get worse. That's why people always find themselves in this vicious cycle of learning English, but never becoming truly fluent in it. Becoming This girl absolutely ignores your past experience, your mastery, how much have you practiced before, she absolutely ignores it. She doesn't care about what you just like. Oh, it didn't use it. Now you lose it. Okay. Um, just a friendly suggestion for you as a colleague or like a person with the same, uh, same job. Do not generalize. Try not to generalize things. Okay. Just my suggestion to you. Uh, yeah. Let's continue. Fluent in English is a goal for a lot of people, but the road they choose to get there oftentimes isn't the one that's going to get them there. By the road, I mean the mindset with which people approach learning a language and the approach itself. Let's just take my family as an example. Okay, before we take your family as an example, uh, what she said before is actually true. This is something that I have to agree. Uh, your mindset is very important, yes. But uh, she talks about mindset here. And then later she doesn't talk about it at all. I don't know why. But um, um, if your English is not improving, you cannot, again, you cannot generalize and use maximalist ways to explain. It. Oh, because you are like, this is the reason. That's not true. Your English, first of all, who are you? 
if you are a guy from France or Germany, you're learning English, it will be much faster than a guy from Japan, for example. Because the, let's say, French and English are from the same language family, you know. Uh, if you guys heard Rammstein, for example. All right, actually, let me open you uh, Blackboard right now and show you an example on this, okay? Okay, so um, let me try to show this for you guys. Um, I took the example from German. Like I said, for example, uh, there was this uh, band called Rammstein, yeah? And they sing Deutschland, my hearts and flammen, which means my heart in flame, yeah? My heart is in flame, let's say, my heart in flame. So this is, of course, uh, literacy language. So it's a little bit, it doesn't always follow like grammatical structures. So in German, it translates as, I'm sorry if there is a German speaker here. I'm not, I just use Google Translate and I heard this song. I'm, I don't speak German. This is just an example. If my pronunciation is terrible, uh, throw, like I don't know, rotten tomatoes on me. So uh, it was called like mine. Herz, um, if it's a typo, I'm sorry, again, my Herz, uh, and then N Flamen, I, I think, maybe there is a mistake here a little bit, but yeah, if you if you see, there are so many similarities, like my, mine, and heart is hearts, and N is N, and flame is Flamen, like, uh, you, if you're a German guy, yeah, you will have this kind of uh, help for you, this is a help, this will... Uh, make things easier for you, you know, but like if you're Japanese, you don't have this advantage But this girl is speaking about everybody in the world like uh, it's, if you're asking yourself a question Why my English is not improving? Who are you? Are you German? Or are you Japanese? If you are Japanese you should remember that a German guy has an advantage over you <laughs> I know it's unfair, you know, I don't write the rules. I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah it's not a huge advantage, but there is a little bit, right? So if you're coming from Asian countries, um, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, because of pronunciation differences, because of the words are very different, you will naturally learn slower. Doesn't mean that every German is better learner than every Japanese, but in, on average, again, a German guy will have a little advantage, you know. So first question, who are you? The second question, are you actually practicing? Or are you watching friends? <laughs> Next one I want to say is um, the third question you need to ask yourself, what is the problem that my English is not improving? Is it because of my teacher? Is it because the course is bad? Or maybe both. Or maybe it's actually improving, but you're not noticing it yet. This is a very sensitive, very hard thing. You can't just take somebody and say, or even for yourself, you cannot say, oh, my English is not improving. You know, it's, uh, it's hard to be true when you're talking this kind of sentences. We live in Ukraine and you will very rarely see a tourist here in our city that speaks English and finding someone to speak English with is also incredibly hard. You can take courses here, of course, and participate in speaking clubs, but I think that these options are available pretty much everywhere and they are not free. My family kind of lives in its own little world where we watch and listen to everything in English. I use English for my Instagram. I write posts and post stories in English. Um, our two channels are in English. I read everything in English. I speak English. Um, okay, again, first, one person, one family has an example, which is you can you can think that it's a survivor's uh, bias survivorship bias or something it's it's biased you cannot use your example uh, sorry you cannot use your family as an example for uh, anybody else just doesn't work that way you know take a a guy who speaks 20 languages and then he's like see see 
he can speak 20 languages, so everybody can. That's not true. Okay? Uh, that's first. Second, again, you are giving a tip, a suggestion that is very hard and uncomfortable to do. Okay? So, all right, you're practicing English, right? And then, I don't know, you're Portuguese or, I don't know, like, from a Latin country. What is the chance, what are the odds that your family members also want to learn English or they can speak English? The odds are very, very low, right? You, you go to your grandpa and say, Hey, grandpa, how's your day, man? And he's going to be like, Que? <laughs> How can you give a tip like this? How can you suggest something like this? If you have a family that everybody speaks English, it's very good for you, but very, very few, very select few families in non-native speaking countries will have this advantage. You can't use it as a suggestion. I'm sorry if this sounds like an insult, but that's a little bit stupid to say this English with my husband and son because we're raising our son to be bilingual however way back when I had lessons on Cambly I worked with an accent coach I took an accent course I participated in which you should never do okay uh, this is off topic but don't take accent coaches don't kill your accents I love your accents is this support I think my YouTube is broken. Well, guys, I don't really know what to say. This is amazing. You guys just made me alive. Thank you very much, guys. And thank you, Asmon. You know, you react to my video and you make me exist. I'm alive. Mm, good plan. Fuck, start rolling at the doll and get accustomed to your new rolling pin. If you feel like you have too much dough on your hand, Roll it back up into a big sausage and cut it up as if you were making a very big booty rod. You speak English. Right. It's Masaka. Hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Sora. Oh my god. Your English is good. I want to hear your accents, okay? I don't know where this idea comes from that accents are bad. Who, who cares? If you have an accent and people understand you when you're speaking but people understand you you have no problem you have zero worries about your accent okay unless if your job requires you let's say you're a, i don't know if you're a teacher probably you should be like having a more more like standard accent like american if you are like a voice actor or like if your job requires you yes but like for anybody else if you want if you like it, if you want, like, oh, I want to speak like a British accent, you know, I, I love, I love discussing the weather. Oh, that was racist. Is this racist? I don't know. And um, if you are, if you genuinely like this, go for it. But uh, if you are speaking with an accent and people are not understanding you, that's not an accent issue. That's a pronunciation problem. You should go back to your phonics and... Uh, have a guide or a teacher to find which parts you are making mistakes that causes uh, that moment of people not understanding you. Because, all right, let's say, uh, good evening, yeah, good evening. And uh, there was this uh, football coach, uh, Unai Emery, his name. And instead of saying good evening, he was saying good evening, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Something like that. Good evening. And uh, uh, you can search on uh, on 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 YouTube. I will post the text here. You can search Unai Emery. Good evening. Everybody loves that. Every people just love him for that good evening because he doesn't he, he can't say good evening. It's such a simple thing, but he can't say that. Or maybe he doesn't want he doesn't care, maybe, right? And he says good evening. People understand him and people love him for that accent. So I tell you, accents actually are good. If you can maintain your 
accent, whether it's Italian or I don't know, like some Asian, like Chinese accent, or if you can maintain your ac accent and have a good pronunciation, you are so good. And by the way, some t I, I've t I had this talk about accents with some students and they say, oh, but uh, I speak with accent and um, my friends, they don't speak with accents and they make fun of me, they laugh at me. Uh, you should not change your accent. You should change your friends. Maybe <laughs> if 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 anybody is making fun or laughing at your accent, I'm sorry, but uh, it's just not a good person. Maybe general, maybe rude, or um, you know, if they're genuine, if if it's not a friendly joke, but uh, they are honestly thinking it's laughable, you should not change your accent. You should change your life priorities. Maybe I don't know look around for other people. English studying group and speaking clubs. I made a lot of friends who I could speak English with, including native speakers. You know, I talk about this in more detail in my video called How I Became Fluent in English. So even if you live in a country where nobody speaks English and you have no one to practice with, you can still live English. Believe me, over time, you get used to this so much that you don't even understand how you had lived before and why the heck you waited for so long to do that. My husband, for instance, never even... Also, notice that there are no specific uh, tips, right? There are no, like, live... It's like, live English. What is live English? What exactly are the tips? What are the steps to living English? She just says, live English. Uh, you know, start surrounding yourself. How? What are the ways? Okay. S see, like, uh, I don't know. The video is just seven minutes. I'm sorry. That I maybe this reaction is going to be like forty minutes. I don't know. But like, uh, I'm I try not to cut because I don't want to be blamed for, um, you know, taking it out of context. And uh, I will put this link of this video in the description so you can check by yourself what does she say so uh go back to our topic uh what exactly means living the language she doesn't specify anything where you can learn english online and lastly i wanted to say that one very important thing you need to learn to do is to enjoy english learning it speaking it and find your ways to have fun with it I don't want to blame, I don't want to accuse, but so many people, even those who mastered English, you know, she, she, like, w she speaks English, and it's quite respectable that she can speak on this level, right? But it's so clear that this person has lack of experience in teaching. Or even if she had real teaching, she didn't really care about so many details, because... You should find a way to enjoy it. Oh, oh, is that so? Is that so easy? Uh, you know, so many people are forced to learn English. So many people. Let me start from with some examples. I have classes, you know, I don't know why, but like younger generations are like younger people, people that are younger than us, like teenagers. I don't know why, but they're like so honest right now, you know. Uh, when I was young, peop anybody asked me, like, why are you learning math? I would lie to my teacher just out of the respect, say, oh, because I'm interested, you know. But right now, kids, many kids, not everybody, but many kids will be like, ah, oh, my mother forces me. <laughs> also, depends on which country, right? But um, I'm working with kids and I'm like, hey, are you okay? I can see that there's something wrong with this kid. And he's like... Uh, she's like, this example wasn't a girl, and she's like, uh, no, because my mother forces me to to do this. I hate English. Now, go work with that, yeah? You're a teacher. Good. They pay, the parents pay you for one hour class, and there is a person who's not responsive, just doesn't like the, you know, the language at all. How can you f find ways? Oh, yeah, play some games, right? Oh, uh, yeah, oh. Wow, you're so smart! Oh my God, and can you you can play games and uh, yeah, we play money for an English teacher to play games with my kid. Yeah, like speaking games is so important. You know, yeah. Just for the record, there are no evidence that playing games improves anything. 
there are just speculations about this just for the record if you have some research show me but it's right now i didn't find anything so yeah uh, enjoy and okay this is a kid how about adults who are forced to learn english because of their job for example yeah like they have a foreign trade or something like this yeah or they want to make a competitive advantage or they want to move to another market another country's market i mean yeah these people don't enjoy you can't say enjoy love it find it the way it's not we're not living in a magical world like oh like in disney you know like a sad person sitting there and you're like why are you so sad i can't find joy in english and you like start to show that the animals are coming it's like when you learn this you will be so great and, the, and you're dancing and singing showing and then this uh, this sad person slowly starts looking around wow english is so magical start enjoying it that's how you imagine i that that's how i imagine that because that's crazy find to way like find ways to enjoy english what do you mean what do you mean like you know what's the what's the way people find they just go watch tv shows <laughs> and they call it practice they watch darman which is great by the way you watch watch darman okay i suggest it's a bit cringy but for only english only purposes is fine but again you know it's just ridiculous to say you should find ways to enjoy. No, you should find comfortable ways to practice, okay? Just you should find a comfortable time. Not everybody is the... You're not talking to one person. I'm sorry you post this video on YouTube. You're not talking to one person. You're talking to... I, I think how many views are there? Well, let me see. Uh, it's like... Uh, two Almost 2 million views, right? So... Uh, this video, 2 million people saw it, right? Can you imagine? 2 million people means 2 million different schedules. How can you, like, you can't force them. You, there is no way that you can give a such generalized tip that will work for everybody, you know, in this way. Fine, enjoy. It's not going to work. Be realistic. Be honest. I know that this is something, like, that makes me sad. Uh... Honest teachers get very low credits, you know. Sometimes the, the students is like, oh, it's not improving. And then you're honestly telling them what's the problem. They feel they don't accept it. Maybe because of their ego or maybe they just want to find something else to blame, you know. But like teachers like this person, if, she, if she's really a teacher, I'm not sure, like when they speak some crazy comfortable things like don't study english yeah right so um again i'm sorry but let's that's not the, the what she says is just not it's ridiculous okay because if you think that doing all of this is too much and it feels like a burden to you you're not going to last okay guys that's it for this video it's gonna last what? Is this war? <laughs> Is this fighting or what? Uh, okay. All right. Let's 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 listen what she has to say in the end. And I really hope that it was useful for you. If that was the case, give this video a like, share it with your friends, watch it again and again and again and again, ten times in a row, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh my god, now I regret I show you the last part. Don't do that. Don't share it. Don't show it to anybody. Oh my god. I was... Can you imagine that? Now let's summarize, okay? Um, if she... Th this video could have been saved so easily if she said, don't just practice English. Also, do this. I would be like, okay, that's a perfect suggestion, even though ev everybody understands this. Like, I think everybody in the world understands that if you are surrounded by the language, you will learn it faster. I don't know why you should make a video about it. But again, um, it's a good tip to improve English. But, uh, you know, she's like, don't study English. And her, her, her thumbnail, I will show you now the thumbnail right now. Okay. Uh, just for you guys. Not only the thumbnail. On this video, many times, she's like, oh, look at the hands crossed and don't study 
English, do this instead, you know, like, um, the, uh, again, this video would be saved if she said also do this, but she's like, don't study English. Um, I'm sorry, but anybody who seriously tells you not to study a language in order to improve, that's just a dilettante or something, I, I don't know, like, uh, uh, you need a constant vocabulary flow. You need to learn new words. You need to know if you're not understanding the words, you can do whatever you want. It's not, it's just gonna, just gonna, the words are gonna float around you, but you're not gonna get this, you know. So first problem with this video was that uh, it's a terrible, damaging, harmful, oh, it's the same thing, damaging, harmful, uh, and uh, again, I'm so sorry. I don't want to insult this person. This is just a disagreement with her idea. Uh, this is not a personal attack. This is an attack on her idea. But what she talked here was very, very stupid. I'm sorry. Again. And other problems were generalizing, not talking specifically what you should do, not mentioning what are the levels they were talking about and um, for me it felt like she just made a crazy title to get views like don't study english you know it sounds so interesting but wait so i have been doing this wrong all the time huh uh, uh i just want to say that you know i on youtube especially there are some teachers who try to do they just care about the title. They want to make a script that is so unbelievably crazy. Everybody's like, wow, wow, this teacher knows some uh, stuff, you know. This teacher knows the things that I didn't know. Wow, he or she is great. Uh, that is something called illusion of education. I'm going to have a separate video about the illusion of education. But uh, just to quickly summarize, illusion of education is when you can hear, a, for example, you can hear a lecture for one hour and it's going to be uh, done in a very professional manner, but everything in this lecture is going to be garbage. The, whatever they say is going to be stupidity, you know, and you might feel that you're studying, but actually you're not, you know, Um you can search like the effect of Dr. Fox. Again, I will uh, make a separate video about the illusion of education. But if you're interested right now, you can search the effect of Dr. Fox. You will see an actor who was speaking nonsense in a lecture. And there are students who thought that they are actually studying, but they were not studying. One is that you can wear shorts, whereas the Easterners wear a suit, and that you can wear a... Mark Turtleneck shirt where we wear a tie. I'd like to start today by getting into the applicability of game theory in the field of medicine and in the field of teaching. Now, when Van Neumann and Morgenstern started with game theory, it was not long before they realized that game theory was not primarily concerned with disclosing the optimum strategy. What it really is concentrating on is concerned with the logic of conflict, that is, with the theory of strategy. Now, in this way, interestingly enough, being here at the uh, gambling state of Nevada, I think has great value. Thank you, gentlemen. They were not learning anything. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry if this is too long. I gave myself a promise to make videos like this because the first time I opened YouTube and saw the English uh, tips and suggestions, I was terrified. I, I don't just want to say, oh, the people are terrible on YouTube. I want to show like detail by detail with the time steps, if possible, I want to show why these suggestions are bad, why um, these people don't know what they're talking about. 
So if you enjoy this kind of content and uh, not only this, I will also post some videos where I will try to teach you something. And um, thank you and have a good time.